Tape number 13 of 16 cassettes from The Waiting on God, August 22, 23, 1984, at the Hotel Hilton, Indianapolis, Indiana. Come in to the, to the Lord and into the church. And yeah. I'll tell you, it just, uh, it just turned uh, the oh. Oh. place upside down nearly if he did. Right side up. Oh, That's yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> it'd, it'd, just be, it'd just be wonderful. I told, bro- I told bro- Brother... I told Brother Jerry Mann, I says, now that's the kind of people it's going, we're going to have, get into our church. Oh, praise the Lord. I says, there's so many around there has been, uh, you know, this doctrine and doctrine and things. And it's going to take people like that to, uh, to really get to, uh, on par for God. Yeah, yeah. And be saved and, and get oh. the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. You see, God had me there at the motel with my wife, and I saw this man raking leaves, help, fixing this, helping there. I saw him all day. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> that evening, of course, mother called me, and you let us know, and I went, and Uncle Harold had been killed in a head-on collision on mm-hmm. State Road 3. I'd had that burden for many hours. Mm-hmm. And uh, after I'd had that experience, I went back, and he was just getting in the car right there by cabin six. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, brother, Oh, brother, we never know what may happen. He said, you're right. I went over to him. He had the keys and the ignition. And I began to tell him about how Jesus leads and guides and how we need him. And he was converted in 10 minutes at the wheel or less. Mm-hmm. Very, very dear. A very and dear. this is his brother that I was telling him about. Is that right? It's never his been brother. saved. Yeah, his brother. Uh-huh. And so, He's a very precious someone. And I saw this precious young man saved. It was about 5.30 in the evening. And I didn't know that it was Sister Gypsy's son-in-law. I didn't know it. And he was converted right there with me at the wheel, ready to go home at evening time. Mm-hmm. When I'd come back with my wife, he'd take my car and watch it. He wanted to help me. He wanted to do everything he could for me. <laughs> Just like many of you. <laughs> and then it wasn't long. He was working over across the mountain. He was with two men, on the, one man on the other side of him. That big boon fell and killed him like that. Took his mm-hmm. life. See, Jesus got, to me, got, got me to him just before he was gone. Just like the janitor. Mm-hmm. Just like our janitor was killed on the highway a year ago next month. He got me to him just a few months before death. Like he did getting me to Ronald Moore just before he went into eternity. I want to thank you for helping me uh, to get there. You see, if I'd have failed motel number five. See, my wife was sick. Well, the first motel, the Maples, was a good one. The next one was a good one. The fine motel was the third, the fourth. But the Lord said, this isn't the one. And when I walked up the steps of the fifth one, he said, this is the place. What if I, I'd have failed that leading? I was just My looking, wife was sick. I was just looking at her today. And I had to pray to how, keep her up. How sweet she looked oh, yeah. today to Praise me. And she looks so much healthier yeah. than she did 33 years ago. I know ago. she does. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's I right. can't get yes. over it, brother. Oh, Hayden. I know she it, She just Gypsy. looks so beautiful. Oh, it's so precious. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, and I you love, see, my wife love, was so I sick. I love all the people here. A lot oh, yeah. of them I don't know and lots that's of right. them that I do, but I yeah. love you all. Well, and sure I, you do. Praise the Lord. I want to meet you in heaven. Oh, yeah. I want to meet you in heaven. Yeah. You want to get to know Gypsy. You've never met anybody like her yet. There's just one in the world. And it's all because Jesus led me to the motel number five. You see, look at the pressure that I was under with my wife being sick. But I didn't stop at the first. And I went on to the second. I said, honey, we can't stay here. All those nice beds, beautiful bathroom. And so she didn't say, now look at here now. I'm sick now. We've got to get one right away. I'm glad she didn't. So I went to the next one. I'd say, honey, this isn't the one. This is 1951. So we went to the next one. It wasn't the one. The fourth, it wasn't the one. But just as I stepped up the steps, he said, this is the place. God sent me there to see a man saved. His father's prayers were bottled in heaven, and he sent me there to answer his prayers. A very talented, gifted man. And then I got to see this man saved, Sister Frost saved, and all because of the directions of Jesus, and that's why we have you. It's because he led us to motel number five. Oh, my. So we wouldn't want to list you. Michael. Sure, when I'm on.
to miss you. I wouldn't want to miss you. I know it. Oh, you're so Praise dear. Lord. So precious. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. You see, as we review how Jesus has led us, and you appreciate. Now, if you appreciate how God has, has guided and are patient with me, he may uh, give you a marvelous experience sometime. Yeah, he, he can do that to any one of us if we're going to give him the glory and all the praise. And he can lead us and direct us. And we want to thank him. I can't praise him enough. See, I didn't get there by accident. I got there by guidance of the Holy Ghost. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. How did he tell me this is the place? How did he tell me this is not the place? This is not the place. This is not the place. This is not the place. But this is the place. Oh, I can't praise him enough. That's right, brother. See, if I praise him enough, he might get me to another place. So we could see some soul saved. Someone start walking with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to thank you. I'm pretty happy about that. Just seeing. Oh, I'm glad. See, we'd have missed Gypsy. We'd have missed all of them. You see, and here's Jerry and Laurel. They have this assignment because the Lord led long ago, 33 years ago. Oh, please, just you feel free.
Aren't you glad God said sing? <laughs> I wanted to hear the instrument. But you see, we never heard anything quite like that. Oh, that, did you write that? Oh, no. Oh, that's not yours. I never heard tell of it before. Oh, that was so good. I believe you're supposed to sing another one. How many did you say you had? Nine? Nine. Nine. Which one was that? That's the day. What, what was the number that of it? That was number four. Number four, I guess. Number eight. Everyone enjoyed this number. Would you like to say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord! Thank you, Jesus, for helping Brother Benjamin and his gift. Blessed Jesus, that's worth all day. That's worth all day. Oh, that's worth all day. I've heard this song for 60 years. 
Oh, praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The fruit, the fruit of the leading of the fifth motel. Hallelujah. Just think of it. When I stopped there 33 years ago, I didn't know. But on the 30, 23rd day of August, 1984, we would be privileged to listen to a precious young man give us a gospel song. That was the original, yes. My wife said that was absolutely original in the spirit. And oh, it... it, it they've been a family to me. Um, yes, so they've been a family. See, fifth, the people that came because of this leading, they're your family. They love you and you love them. They you have, were looking for this love, weren't you? That's right. They never criticized. And, they never uh, criticized. They, uh, just a little bit, of, little bit of criticism could send me out. Yeah, if there had been a size criticism, uh, you'd been gone. Because, see, you're very gracious and very sensitive and long, and you've sought love and care. Yes, they they gave me that. uh, They gave you that. Just think how great this is, how wonderful it is. (laughs) Oh, I don't know how to tell where we were while you were singing. Just trying to thank (laughs) Jesus. Oh, thank Jesus. Well, this is so sweet. It's so precious. His Holy Spirit, His love. Oh, how grateful we are. See, I want Him to sing more. But it take God to ever anoint Him again like that. It would be a wonder if He's ever as privileged to ever have another anointing like that. And that the Holy Spirit would tell me number eight when I didn't know any of them. I, I didn't know. In fact, I didn't know He could sing. And he told me yesterday, I believe, he said he was singing. I didn't know he was, could sing. I thought he played the bassoon. <laughs> he does, does well. But you see, he sings as the Lord leads him. And oh, we want to pray that the Lord will anoint him again. Oh, it was so precious. Oh, oh Jesus right here with us. Jesus the Christ. Because this praise his son. Oh, how wonderful. You've been happy, haven't you? You've been blessed here. Oh, I've been so blessed. (laughs) Again and again and again. Oh, I'm so thankful. It's been wonderful. It's in my heart now. I'm so glad for you. How Jesus has worked through you today to help us. He's helped. Praise the Lord. So thankful. Just this morning, I I knew that God must be in it. I was, I have to eat breakfast for health reasons. I I was at a restaurant and a Waitress came and spilled coffee on me. So. <laughs> oh, she came and spilled coffee on you? Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to remember so some she things did, that you, you said. I said, praise the Lord, that's okay. And you said you praised the Lord when <laughs> she spilled the coffee was, on you. It was a nice, wonderful way to be, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, he was with me one time, and the waitress came in, and the food came right down <laughs> on me like this way. Yeah, I just... And then I said, praise the Lord. Don't be discouraged. She's going to cry. I said, don't cry. I said, I'll, I'll clean this up. You don't have to worry about it. So I got down and I started cleaning it up. Yeah. She went in and she cried. The owner of the place, he came out. I said, that's fine. Don't worry about that. I said, this is all to be this way. This, I said, this old suit will clean up. It's not too good. Yes. So I helped to clean it up. He said, it looks like you've had experience. I said, listen, I've cleaned floors, mop floors, and clean with my mother. And I, I said, you go back in the kitchen, tell her don't feel bad. Tell her, please don't, because that'd make her nervous the next time that she'd try to wait and the dishes would slip off and come down. I said, don't worry. They just, you know, they just slipped off on the right person. <laughs> I said, no, but you, you see? Because it was, sure. so she could be taught that someone loved her when things spilled. She could find out there was somebody that would love her when things were spilled on them. And she used to be encouraged because you're likely to spill anything. Or I am too. Just before you know it, it's, it's, it's over. So we're just like the coffee was spilled on him this morning in the restaurant. He said, praise the Lord. 
See, and the, and the waitress was probably just she embarrassed was, oh yes. and hurt. She wanted to pay for my meal. She wanted to pay for the and meal. She well, wanted to pay for the cleaning. She wouldn't take my money. I said, can I tip you? She no, said, that's yes, right. So. As, you know, when, when the waitress was bringing me ketchup and she broke it and she just, oh, she just really got me. But I told her, I said, no, that's all right. I said, that'll all clean off. It'll come out in the cleaning. I said, don't feel badly about it. That took place in Selma, Indiana. And uh, the place with you is in West Virginia. That's right. And so we had experiences in restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, every, every place. Just have wonderful times. Oh, that song was so good. Oh, that song was so good. Oh, I just wanted to do Jesus well all the time. Praise Jesus. See, what we'd have missed if Jesus hadn't led me, if I'd have stopped at the fourth motel, honey, the third, the second, because you were sick. You could, I had to pray, you know, I had to have a prayer meeting because you had to lie down. She said, I can't sit up any longer. So I had a prayer meeting, and when I did, she could s still sit up. See, I had to get to the place to find you. Glory. I'm glad See, you I had to find Gypsy. I had to find her family. Rachel, this grand, where is this precious Rachel? Would you stand up, Rachel? You have sent such beautiful letters to my wife and me, honey. Oh, my. See, she is the daughter of Brenda, the granddaughter of Gypsy, and uh, brother and sister Ward's daughter, Jerry and Brenda. And she, oh, she's so precious. I trust you young ladies that are really Christian will be able to spend a little time with her, encourage her, for she has such a vision. I'm so thankful for the fifth motel because I wouldn't be here. And it's and the best time of my life has been when I've been with the people in Revolve for a day. And I'm so thankful for my pastor and my family. And when I needed a friend when I was younger, God sent Sally Davis. And she's meant more to me than anybody. And she's been a friend when I needed somebody. And through her and Pastor Oliver helped me this April. I didn't know what I was going to do. And he, he helped me so much. He helped me to realize that it was worth it. Going off for God, it wasn't just a fake. Yes. I'm so thankful. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Praise the Lord, Rachel. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Sally and Richard's ministry to her. Yes. Just think how the Lord helped us to find Brenda when she was a young girl. I was going up in the mountains with my wife. And I said, oh, honey, look there. There's a young girl. She went down in the ditch. She went way down like that. So I stopped the car, and I went back, and I said, oh, she says, I can't get this out of here. I said, let me try. So I took the wheel and uh, prayed, and we came right out of the ditch. <laughs> and she was so thankful. And then I found out she was my sister Gypsy's daughter. She was a young girl. That's been many years ago. Probably a quarter of a century. But wasn't it wonderful that Jesus helped me to stop along the ditch? Yeah, stop. You, you have been with me in the ditch before. You were with me, you know, years ago, about 40 years ago, and you and I and Brother Fraser was going out to the country to find a man and pray with him. And we were going, and I was sitting in the middle. And I said, oh, stop the car. There's a man in the ditch here. Got to love him right now. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And uh, I didn't know him. We'd never been in that country. No, never been there before. No. I said, stop the car. Yes. I said, there's a man in the ditch, yes. and I need to love him. Yes. So I got out of the car, got down in the ditch where he was, got my arms around him. I said, you're precious, brother. I began to pray with him. And he said, who, who sent you to me anyhow? Yes. Did someone call you? Yes. Did you know? No, I said, I never saw you before. I was just sitting between these two ministers and you were down here standing in the ditch and the Lord told me to stop and love you. He yes. said, surely my neighbors called you, didn't they? I said, no, I don't know any neighbors here. Yes. And he said, come home with me. Yes. Yes. He said, my wife and I had trouble. Uh, we need you at home. So we went home with him. Yeah. Found him in a ditch. Yeah. It was precious, wasn't it? It was wonderful. Brother Helm, there was a spirit of laughter there. We were singing, the, the three of us, Brother Frazier, 
to yeah. us. We're singing gospel songs. And we just kept singing when you stopped. And they were sort of laughing. This man said, we sing like this in the saloon. And he said something. And you, you got, I said, and the elderly man, his father-in-law, laughed with him. And you got out and uh, loved him and then he began to cry yeah. there was such a change in spirit and attitude by God's grace yes. and, and the dear man uh, appreciated it so much no one had ever been to see them no one had ever talked to them about the church they, I thought it was so special yeah. that when this dear brother laughed at you or laughed at us that you right that moment you, you were between us brother Fraser and me you said let me out of here you couldn't get out of the car quickly enough and I was so blessed by it. And loved him right yes. there. Yes. And then he began to weep. Yes. And he God said, you know, we've been wanted. having trouble. Surely a neighbor called you to come down here and yes. help me. He kept saying that. I said, no. No one called me. Jesus told me to stop here. Yes. And uh, so he took me home with him. Yes. So you have experiences in restaurants, in motels, and in ditches. And in wheat fields. There's Claude. I went up to pray with him. I driven about seven to 9,000 miles to pray with this man. 200 and some miles a trip, back and forth, back and forth for 30 some years. Um, I went up and Jesse told me he was in a wheat field. So I went over to the wheat field about three miles or four, something like that. And their combine had stopped. He and his neighbor had a combine, they were in partnership. And so, I said, well, what's the matter? They said, we don't know what's wrong with this. I, he said, it stopped and we can't get it to work. So I began to pray. So I walked around the combine. And I said, now Jesus, you know that my brothers here need to get this wheat thrashed and combined. So you know exactly what's wrong with this combine. I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know what a combine is like. Only I just see it. And I just prayed and I went around the combine real slow. And so when I got clear around to right there, he spoke to me. So I got under the combine and I said, Oh, Claude, come here. Here's your trouble. Here it is. And he came and he said, Sure enough, fixed it. Took about five minutes and they were ready to thrash again. And he told me that that, you can take the microphone back there, Todd, to him. He told me that that combine never stopped anymore till they traded it off. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not turned on there, uh, evidently, or it's not turned on over here. There it is. This, this combine had an auxiliary motor on it. And after I called on the combine, fixed it, we stand there looking at it. And the thing slowly, excuse me, slowly started turning. All we had to do is crawl on the tractor and <laughs> turn on the gas and away we went. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've had some great times, haven't we, brother? Oh, it's been Praise wonderful. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, a wonderful time. You see, when I met you in 45, which is 39 years ago, the Lord told me I could not share my pilgrimage with you for one year. I waited until one year later in 1946, I shared my pilgrimage of walking with Jesus, his revelation, and you would have the witness of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then you'd get the witness, and I had the witness that you had the witness, and then we just kept up there, and we had such a wonderful time uh, that we just couldn't praise the Lord enough. Do you remember the night in the Kimmel Methodist Church when we heard the mighty rushing in? Total darkness, him? total darkness. Hallelujah. Yes, it was, we had been praying God work with us marvelously about midnight. We came out of the church after this great fellowship in the Holy Spirit together, and we were in total darkness. It was all I say, solid ice, without any light in the village, except I remember when I started down the steps at the very top, I remember seeing a lamp a long way off in the east, somewhat in the south. Not due east, but just a little to the south. And we had a hold of hands. We took a whole hand because it was so slippery and you couldn't see where you were going. And you see, if you have a hold of each other, if one slips, you can hold the other. Because you know when you're walking in total darkness, 
I don't know whether you ever had the experience of walking in total darkness, which you couldn't see anything where you were around for hundreds of feet. You couldn't tell anything. You couldn't see a building. You couldn't see a car. In fact, you and I held on, and we walked about, uh, we walked a distance, and, and uh, we were on one side of uh, this particular home, and finally the Lord helped us to get our bearings with that light way over here. And so we came back and felt the car. We could feel the car out in front of the parsonage. We felt we could feel where we were then after all that time. And here we were, two men that had never been lost. And we were lost in the night right. on ice right. until we got our bearings because of a little light to the southeast and found our way to the parsonage. And when we felt the car, we knew we weren't far from the house. And Jesus helped us. We'd had a Holy Ghost time. We might never have met if you hadn't prayed your father to the church at Crown Mall. Yes, sir. The Lord like... helped me to pray my daddy to that church because he wanted to go to the other church where he was and they wanted him very much. And I prayed and prayed. And Jesus told me that he was to go to Kimmel Circuit. And, of course, the, the other church, it was either Inwood or Atwood. I get them confused. But that's where he was. And they wanted him to stay there, and he wanted to stay there, but God told me he was to go to Kimmel Circuit, Cromwell and Wolf Lake. And uh, he went, my wife and I went with him, and stayed four years, and we found you right away. And we used to have revival meetings two weeks at each church. Yes. We, we never miss a night for, for six weeks. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, bless us so good. We saw people <laughs> saved, men saved, young people right. saved, homes changed, people would be saved, their lives would be transformed. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, wasn't that a wonderful time, Claude? How Jesus blessed Jesse. Amen. Remember those times when God had saved souls? Yes, Jesse. She taught school for 30 years. 41. 41. 41, I for, taught. 41 years you taught But God school. helped me or I couldn't have. I didn't know enough. But I tell you, I got something yet this forenoon that I'll, will never leave me. I've always admired Joseph and what he went through and, and how God used him. And I think maybe I won't talk back and criticize or doubt. I hope not. Well, that's good. For the grace of God. Yes, praise the Lord. I'm Pray for our sons. I'm so glad the Lord helped you this morning to get a glimpse of something. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. So it's marvelous how Jesus... Bless us and guides, isn't it? Wonderful. Yes. Church on my own, actually. Yes. Uh, somebody brought me in. I know someone brought you in. Well, that's the way we get there. His name is Lee. Oh, Brother Lee, is he here? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stand up, brother. He's the one that brought Brother Benjamin in. And we're so thankful. I met Brenda at a Baskin Robbins ice cream parlor and uh, she witnessed to me invited me to dinner and to church and I took her up on the offer and it was what I was looking for uh, yes. Yes. I invited Michael along I told him about this place where you could feel a great amount of love and uh, I didn't invite him but he said well why don't you take me there and so so uh, the next Sunday, he was with me, and uh, I guess for weeks and weeks, uh, we'd drive about 40 miles, probably more than 40 miles, to uh, attend church there. Wonderful. And we're thankful. And you found the love there, the love of right. Jesus, the love of God, because God guided in 1851. Praise the Lord. That's so precious. I'm glad for Jesus' love. Amen. Thank you very much. So glad you were brought by the Holy Spirit to this place. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. I believe you're to sing again. I can't get you back out of there. One, two, three. Number three. See, when I try to take him from the piano to the seat, he operates in the gift area in a certain manner and way. That's how I know that he's to sing another one. By God's grace, would I know again. 
through the help of the Lord, that God could bless again. Jesus walked. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, son. Glory be to God. When you walk with the Lord, it's such a high privilege, great delight and joy, happiness, an adventure, challenge, feeding place, a banquet hall, place of help, place of salvation. Praise the Lord. 
I've been praying yesterday and today to see if we, God would permit the choir from Scott Depot to sing. And I've worked and worked. I said, Lord, are you going to let me? Are you going to permit me? And get the witness for him to sing all this time. And for Jeannie to sing. And uh, I'm trusting the Lord to allow me the privilege of having them sing for us. God willing. Would you please stand? Sister Jenny, would you come up and lead in a chorus, a stance of a song, please? If you Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory Walking in sunlight. Okay, okay. Maybe we'll pick it up just a little. Sure, sure. Walking in sunlight. Jewel, you are to sing, please. Number three on your duet list. While we're sitting here and listening, I'm sure we need to pray and have faith and believe for the Lord to bring his people to oneness to the experience of entire sanctification. Trust that you are praying and believing for it. Because it's God's will. Trusting, you're going to persevere and not be discouraged, but take heart to do as the Lord Jesus would lead. For a pure heart, a pure people, a holy people, that will be as Jesus would have us to be, loving our neighbor as ourselves. And this, of course, is God's will. Amen. So glad to have sister sitting here by my wife. Give her uh, the microphone and, and uh, we we'll want to hear her testimony. Praise the Lord. And uh, the last time I was with you was at the Hubbards. And uh, you were sitting by us. And, oh, didn't we have a wonderful time of fellowship? Oh, what a fellowship we had. And the Holy Ghost. And I'm sure these men sit here could see the light on this oh, yeah, sister. Time been like a daughter to us and, and she's on the firing line would you like to stand and testify praise the Lord I'm so thankful that um, I was just feeding in the back you see it's wonderful back there but when you get up here I felt my nothingness I, I really felt unworthy it's a privilege Oh, it's a joy. So I just, I don't know what else to say. I'm so in to the Lord. Hallelujah. But it's a privilege. Yes. So it's thankful. It is true. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we had such a precious fellowship that evening. You remember how the Holy Ghost blessed us? Talked to my wife about it. And we haven't seen you very much since that time. It's been a few years ago. 
I asked um, Brother Edwin, he said that he thought we were to go to Muskegon for revival, and we fought it because we didn't know what we were going into. <laughs> but I'm so thankful that God got us there. And I said to Reverend Helm, I said, do you think maybe I could meet Brother Lauren? <laughs> he said, I don't know. He said, he may even know who you are when you walk in the room. I don't know anything. So we're just so thankful we got there. The devil fought severely. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful. So when we got there, I just was so thrilled to be there. And when we got to the time for the meal, you were praying for who to sit next to you. And I got to sit next to you. I know. Oh, it was <laughs> so I'm so thankful. And today, it's been like sitting at Jesus' feet, just on the Mount of and the attitudes and just listening and learning. And I just feel so humbled. I'm so thankful. Praise the Lord. Turn around so they can see from the back. Just turn clear around if you can. All the way around if you don't mind. This way, yeah. So they can see your thing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're so thankful that we have them because of my brother Edwin. My brother Edwin, we were privileged to lead him to Jesus in 1938 and because of his conversion then we were privileged to see Mark David say back here and then because of God's guidance we were able to meet the Hafiz. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we're ready. Uh, is, are we ready? Good. Robert and Jules going to sing for Jesus. So glad you could be with us. Yes. I think we have Jewel because Jesus led in 1926, 1949. That's we, because of that guidance, because of that guidance, uh, we are privileged to be at Grant City, where we found you, your mother and father, and your brother. And through him, we have Joseph. Oh, if we could just tell you all about different individuals. This one pivots upon this guidance, this guidance, this direction. We have this precious son. And you see, he and his wife are like our children. And he told me, uh, when he came up to love me, he told me a very sacred thing that was so holy that we, have, we want to give Jesus all the glory and all the praise. But we have Joseph and Betty because Jesus led us to Robert after we found you. Robert wanted us to come to Logansport in uh, 63. And I said, I cannot come until 64. I had to wait one year because if I'd have gone in 63, you were not there. You were a hundred and some miles away. And you were disappointed in the church for 22 years. You were hurt, you told me. I didn't know that. And so I was to find him. And I found him. And the day I was with him, on 8th day of December of that year of 64, he met Jesus that day. Never been the same since. No. Oh, it's a great story. And now he's a missionary down in Knoxville to the millionaires, to the aristocracy, to the poor people. Over across the tracks. He's in the garage. He's in the filling station. He's in this beautiful home. He's uh, here and there witnessing about how Jesus helped me to find him. And then he found Jesus because of that. So he's a missionary down in Knoxville area talking to people about the Savior and how we need to walk with Jesus. I told the ladies the other day about our... I was telling a lady the other day about some of my experiences, and she reminded me of Mary Webster. She said, oh, don't tell me anymore. I've got to digest this. Yes. She said, I'm being so blessed. She said, could you wait just a little bit and then tell me some more? And she said, I don't know how much I can take. It was so exciting. Isn't that great? <laughs> when you find somebody that really is hungry, oh, yeah. it's such a help. It's a blessing yeah. to your soul. Yes. Because you get as much as they do or more. You get more. <laughs> That's right. You get more. 
Well, I tell you, we want to praise Jesus. It hadn't been for God leading us to see the C.C. Field for the way of Greensboro Revival where Emory was saved. And that's how we, we found your family through that leading. And then that led me to Joseph. Little did I know when we found you that we were going to find Joseph and Betty. How the Lord works here just about a couple months ago at the most. I said to Junior, it works for me. I said, Junior, we've got to stop and go to lunch. Yeah. I said, now I don't really want to be disturbed, but we've got to go to lunch. And we went over this restaurant. It's not my choice, but that's fine, you know. Yes. And who do you think? I felt like we shouldn't hurry out, but who walked in but Jewel's brother and sister in law? The one that's the minister that you were talking about. Yes, sir. That got you to me. Now, and they were on it. their way to Atlanta and on vacation. And here they came through Knoxville. Of the and many stopped. restaurants. Yes. I marvel how the Lord works. See how that, how God, Jesus worked there. Yeah. God worked to, through them to lead us to you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then that particular day you had that fellowship together. Mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't just happen. No? Huh? Oh, they wrote you about it. Curry. See, Knoxville, Tennessee is a, a radius of the center of the city, a radius of 20 miles. There are scores of restaurants. Oh, yeah. that, scores. That's Knoxville spread out. And he would get to the right one. He said, we've got to leave now, got to go. God's been helping him to get to places where he was needed since we found him. And we want to thank Jesus for oh, yeah. helping him to witness to many people. Many about how Jesus can save and how we need to put Jesus first. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's great, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
Jesus, thank you, thank you, Jew and Robert. So thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spanking his throat and touching because he was not well when we got here uh, day before yesterday. And he was sick, and but he kept on going anyhow. And uh, remember, I've been loving this boy since he was born. And I never let anyone make fun of him. No, I never did. When he was a little boy, he, he uh, okay. you know, uh, different ones just kind of make a little joke, you know. I never wanted that. And see, that hurt him a lot. And he never got over it, except through Jesus. But uh, I never had that, you see. I never allowed that. Well, if I were there. See, he doesn't want, God doesn't want us to make a joke about anybody. No, I know it's true. Or cause anyone. See, a lot of people think it's funny to find something about someone when they talk a certain way or say certain things. But he doesn't want it ever to happen. Because it hurts people and they never recover from it. I know it. Never get over it. I know it, I know it, I know it. Many people have been hurt in many places. Because people didn't didn't realize what damage it is. They just thought it was funny. An expense of another person's personality. And so he's told me this. See, I didn't realize it. But you told me this happened a few years ago. Yes. That uh, Uncle Lauren never had that to happen when he was there. That's why he could use your life to draw me out of that horrible pit. Through so Jesus, our Savior. Oh. Maybe it couldn't have happened otherwise. I'll just think of that. Because he was in one of the most terrible pits ever was. And he couldn't get out and there was no one that could help him out. There wasn't any medical procedure in the world that could get him out of there. They tried it. it was, he was, the walls were too, he was too far down. They couldn't lift him out. Like when James was in that terrible pit of terrible aftermath of malaria. He had the killer malaria and he was clear down in a well and he couldn't get out and he was in awful shape he couldn't move he couldn't do anything Nancy had to help him and she called me and told me what a place he was in were you ever in seemingly a well about that big around you're about 10 or 12 15 feet straight down and all you can see is just the rim of the top that's where he was and when she got a hold of me I began to pray I said I said, so she says, I'll have to carry him. So she just, she just took, carried him right over to the phone. And of course, she's had back trouble for many years. She fell on her tailbone years ago and never was really recovered of it. But she got precious James, and she carried him to the telephone and got the earpiece. And I said, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, bring him up out of there, lift him out of there. And he came right out of the well. Came right out of it. Thing. The aftermath of the two types of malaria, one of them the killer. So you were in a pit and Jesus came and lifted you out. See, made you whole. When medical people said there was no way, you'd always have to go on seeing bleeding bodies, cutting knives, walking skeletons. They couldn't get him out of it. I resigned myself that uh, I'd spend the rest of my life in an institution. Jesus helped me 
through God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus saved him, changed his life, and never had that again. See, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle of Jesus. Never had it again. Twelfth day of February, twelve years ago next, was a great, great hour when Jesus came and saved him and took him out of that terrible pit. Amen. Uh, He's going to give a reading, the Lord willing. Just uh, want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for their precious love gifts and and how uh, I'm thinking how wonderfully rich we are because of your obedience and. Uh, Looking across the people, I mean, just, I mean, really, really special friends. Oh, they're wonderful. I mean, you know, the cream of the crop. Yeah. So you know, that we're privileged to know because, because of you leading us to Jesus, because of your faithfulness. And, uh, and so that's how this got in my heart. Oh, I say. Well, <laughs> you're sanctified in the name of Jesus, giving God all the glory. Christ all the glory. I called him John. He called me Jim Nye 50 years. I knowed him and he knowed me and he was fair. Honest all that time in the square. I'd pass the mornings going down the road or driving into town. We'd look up the same old way. Lift a hand, smile and say, Hello, John. Hello, Jim. Guess you real don't often see such kind of friends as him and me. Ain't much to dog and big and say kind of friends that a stick and stay. Come rich, come poor, come rain, come shine. Whatever he might have was mine, and mine was his, and we both knowed it. When we hollered on the road, how did John? How did Jim? And when I got froze out one year, he dropped in on me with, with that queer big smile on his way to town. Laid $200 down, says no interest, understand your note. <laughs> then he took my hand and squeezed it, and then he drove away. Wasn't nothing more to say. So long, John. So long, Jim. And, w- and when John's boy come court and sue, John smiled, and well, I smiled some too, as if things was a coming out, as if we had fixed them just about. <laughs> and, and when Sue smiled and told me, why well, I sat and chuckled on the sly. So did John put out his hand, no words but these you understand. <laughs> Shake, John. Shake Jim. And when Sue's mother died, John come. He sat with me and he was dumb. His first speech might be concerned. And then my eyes of his hair burn a light of love. Sympathy. Friendship you don't often see. My hand in his that day. What nothing more to say. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. Somehow the world just ain't the same today. The trees are all aflame with autumn, but there's something gone. Went out of life, I guess, with John. He nodded that old grizzled head upon the pillow of his bed. Lifted the helping hand. Whispered sometime. Understand. Bye, John. Bye, Jim. Wait just a minute, Robert. Wait just a minute. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Uh, you, you probably have another one, don't you, on Riley, James Whitkin Riley? Sweetheart of mine. That's it. That's it. That's it. James Whitkin Riley was a distant cousin of uh, family. 
And uh, so uh, and he gives uh, one of those. Just think, uh, he was gone, they couldn't rescue him. He was gone in the great pit. See, the Lord lifted him out. See, he's a talent. Look at this. Look at it. Such talent. See, we found him because of Jesus, the guidance of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Touch his throat, Jesus. Touch his throat and take out this infection. It's tickling, I pray in Jesus' name. As one who cons at evening or an album all alone, who muses on the faces of the friends that he has known, as I turn the leaves of fancy and shadowy design, I find the smiling features of an old sweetheart of mine. <laughs> The lamplight seems to flicker with a glimmer of surprise as I turn it low to rest me of the dazzle in my eyes. And I light my pipe in silence, save a sigh that seems to yoke its fate with my tobacco and to vanish with the smoke. Oh, tis a fragrant retrospection for the loving thoughts that start into being are like perfumes from the blossoms of the heart. And to dream the old dreams over is a luxury divine As my truant fancy wanders with that old sweetheart of mine though, though I hear beneath my study like a fluttering of wings The voices of my children and their mother as she sings I feel no twinge of conscience to deny me any theme when care has cast her anchor in the harbor of a dream. The face of lily beauty with a form of very grace floats out of my tobacco like the genie from its vase. And I thrill beneath the glances of a pair of azure eyes as glowing as the summer and as tender as the sky. I, I could see the pink sunbonnet in the little checkered dress she wore when first I kissed her and she answered the caress with the written declaration that as surely as the vine grows around the stump she loves me. That old sweetheart of mine. Once again I feel the pressure of her slender little hand as we used to talk together of the future that we planned. When I would be a poet with nothing else to do than to write the tender verses that she set music to. Oh, and we would live together in a, in a fairy garden spot, hid in a nest of roses with an airy garden spot, where the fruit was ever, where the fruit was ever, vine was ever fruited, and the blossoms ever fair. And, the, and the birds were ever singing for that old sweetheart of mine. And she would be my lover forever and a day. And I, her faith, faithful sweetheart, to the golden hair of the gray. And we would be so happy that when either his lips were dumb, they would not smile in heaven till the other's kiss had come. But ah, my dream is broken and by a step upon the stair, the door is slowly open. My wife is standing there. Yet with eagerness and rapture, all my visions I resign to greet the living presence of oh, that old sweetheart of mine.
may be seated. Thank you. The second one on the list of the adult choir. See, Jesus rescued him from a deep pit, and once he couldn't get out, there was no way. And God, you see what a gift was here. Gift in readings, gift in writing, gift in singing, gift in decoration. All these flowers, he arranged every floor arrangement. He did all this work here. All the background, everything, he did it. Where's the best way? Oh, where's the best way? I believe, would it be all right to bring them up here? Or I believe so. Just come right on up here. And uh, we'll take the flowers and move them away for a while. Thank you. Thank you, man, for taking them away. This choir has come about 300 miles to be with us one way. 68 came the day of our 50th wedding anniversary. 68 times a little under 600. And so you know the thousands of miles, the total miles that they represented. <coughs> you can come right on back. If, yeah, you can come on back this way if you want to. We have plenty of room back here, so that no one trips on the steps. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, give strength. Amen. When the platform is a little small. Yes, we can move the piano if you a man will. The man that doesn't have back trouble. Charlie can tell him where to move it. Thank you. Oh. 
think we have this choir because Jesus guided 15 years ago in a very little place.
Number 13. Thank you, Jesus. time. <laughs> 